Hello there and welcome to episode 19 of Adventures in Knitting with Jen. Uh, my name is Jen and if you are new here, um, I am a teacher in the uh, way up north and I teach grade five and this is my little knitting channel where I talk about what I'm making, what I want to make, mostly knitting stuff. <laughs> anything related and a little life stuff thrown in there um yeah so it's report card season right now so i'm just doing this quickly <laughs> um before i have to spend the rest of the day writing report cards Ugh. um that's the worst <laughs> uh all right well get right into it what am i wearing i have my first finished object is my Felix cardigan. I finally finished it and yes, I love, I love it. I love it. I knit it with Drops Air. So it's so light, which is perfect because where I teach, um, the, it's hot. <laughs> they it used to be super cold. So I was knitting all these warm things to wear to school. Uh, but they changed the heating system last year, and now it's, I believe, fueled by wood. We have a huge, huge wood, like, furnace outside that they keep going, and now it's hot <laughs> all the time. So this sweater is perfect because it's so light and fluffy, and it's, I believe, I'll have it right here. I think it's alpaca. Yeah. Baby alpaca. So if you don't know Drops Air, it's a tube. I don't know if you can see that. It's a tube and then they put the yarn inside of it. So it makes it really light and fluffy. I love it. I'm obsessed with Drops Air now. I'm like, what can I make? I have three skeins left um, of this. So to think of what I can make. The color too, so bright and vibrant. I don't know about you, but... I don't understand this whole wear neutral boring colors in winter thing. <laughs> that seems to be the trend. I love all the color. As you can tell if you've been watching <laughs> my little podcast for a while. Um, and I think we need color the most in winter because it can get pretty dark and depressing. So I'm all about the color. And yeah, I am loving this. I got these buttons off of Etsy and they're little flowers so oops <laughs> yeah I really like them <clears throat> they're little wood buttons with flowers so yeah that's my first finished object and I love it I love it so much every I feel like it's my best fitting sweater too well I have other ones that are pretty good but I tell you what gauge swatching Oh my word, I never used to gauge swatch and I have a lot of sweaters, my first couple sweaters that I just, I don't wear a lot of um, because they don't fit properly. I have one that I'm going to tear out and re-knit, um, but yeah, since I started gauge swatching, I love my sweaters so much more. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, Felix, Cardigan by Amy Christopher's. Yes. So next finished object, my only other finished object is a Sophie scarf. <clears throat> um, I made the long version and I knit it extra long too because I just, I was hoping to use up. I had, I didn't realize how little yarn this took. So I was hoping to use one and a half skeins and I didn't. I only used one. So yeah and you just wear it like this all the blue today <laughs> can tie it like that or wear it just like a scarf you would I really like this I have gloves oh I should have showed them but um that match in the same yarn so I have a set a matching set now of gloves and a scarf. However, this is Sandisgarn alpaca. 
also seems to be an alpaca theme going on but this is not soft and it is scratchy against the neck i wouldn't use this yarn to knit this again i like this i'll knit it. i'll knit another one but i'm gonna knit it with something i mean the pattern calls for cashmere yarn so definitely <laughs> stick to the cashmere when you're knitting this because it is scratchy it works though like you know if i'm going to work i throw it underneath my coat and it's good to keep me nice and warm it is very warm so that's my sophie scarf by the petite by petite knit yeah in sandis garn alpaca and this yarn was a christmas gift two years ago so i'm trying to go through my stash <laughs> and use up the oldest yarn first that i have um so yeah speaking of oldest yarn and oldest projects i have pulled one out that i kind of forgot about and i am trying to finish it and it is this blanket more blue <laughs> the theme going on here so i am making this for my nephew maverick it was supposed to i started this i don't know how many years ago honestly <laughs> it was supposed to be a birthday present and then it was going to be a christmas present and then a birthday present again anyways it's from this book the bernat's baby blankets to knit and it is the mitered blanket it's just what it's called so that's what it's gonna look like when it's finished and I'm almost halfway there. I, yeah, so I have another square done. I just need one more square to knit for this half and then do the other. Yeah, I am working on my seaming. I hate seaming, but I'm working on it and I need to, I need to figure it out. I was looking up tutorials on mattress stitching and I did really good here, <laughs> really good here happy with that I can do like one side like this looks really good I'm pretty pleased with that but cross <laughs> I haven't figured out how to do this way yet so but it for an eight-year-old boy I will have it done for for his birthday his birthday is in July so I have eight nine squares to go to finish it so yeah <laughs> i'm going to attempt to get it done by july if i try to do one every other week or one a week we'll see but yeah i really like it so far so that's the miter blanket and my oldest project the yarn is so soft it is feels like butter by uh, Lion Brand, and it is so soft, so it'll be perfect. He loves cozy blankets. If you know the Wallaces, you know we are obsessed with cozy blankets. Like, I'm 40-something, and I still have a cozy blanket. <laughs> um, so, and his current one is in shambles, although we're pretty loyal to our blankets, so <laughs> I don't think he'll give it up, but at least he'll have something else when that one finally disintegrates. <laughs> Yes, so, oh, and speaking of ripping projects out and starting over, that's what I did. <clears throat> I had um, knit pants. <laughs> I made the Cable Crush Joggers by Knititude. I made them last year, two years ago. Anyways, it was a joke because they were way, way too big. I had gauged, I had did a, made a gauge swatch and went down in needle size to make them fit but i did not take into consideration 10 i did not look at positive ease and they're supposed to be 10 inches of positive ease in these and no <laughs> they're it, they were huge like i could i made the extra large and they were huge um i could fit like my whole body in one leg and because i'm so short um I had to decrease a lot of stitches to get down to the ankle. So they look like those like riding 
pants that are puffy at top. I forget what they're called. <laughs> so I tore out all the yarn and I'm starting over. So yeah, I have a waistband uh, done. This is a folded over. This I kept, I already had that made. I wasn't gonna make it again. And just knitting, knitting, knitting for the top part. Yeah. So the yarn is Lion Brand. Oops, all my yarn's going to fly in here. Wool Ease is what I'm using. So I have extra skeins because I I always buy too much yarn because I'm afraid. And then this is something I'm learning is that I use a whole lot less yarn than I think I'm going to. So because these are going to be much smaller, I'm not going to touch those extra skeins. I have to figure out something else to do with them. But yeah, so I'm making the large this time. And yes. Cable crush joggers. We'll see how they go, <laughs> how long it takes me. Uh, but it's just straight knitting right now, so it's perfect for evening. And my other work in project progress oh, is, oops, going flying. Ah, okay. Oof. Too many knitting needles here to keep track of. is the joy shawl i just started it um we had two days of professional development the last two days and so you know i need something to knit while i'm listening because that just helps me focus <clears throat> and so i started this project and it's just just the basics right now the joy shawl um yeah and i'm pairing it with this yarn so originally, I think I might have showed it on the last, on one of my last episodes talking about my upcoming projects. And I was going to pair it with this bright blue. But the more I looked at this yarn, this is from Songbird Fibers. I just, I can't, no, it has to be neutral. So I looked through my stash and found a gray. And I'm just, I'm just so much more happy with this combo than like with bright blue. I just, I don't know. This is just so mellow and chill. I needed something gray. So I found this. I mean, one's BFL, one's Merino. Is that going to matter? I don't know. I was kind of hoping to make socks with this because I love, 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 love BFL socks. But it just needed to be here. So, yeah, the Joy Shell, I will. It's not a priority. <laughs> this is probably take a while to finish that one. I'm working on my pants mostly, um, but it started. It started. All right. And the last work in progress that I'm working on is my Anne, Anne Isadora shawl. I believe that's, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. A-N-E-S-I-D-O-R-A shawl by Lindsay Fowler. So this is my scrappy project for Sundays because I'm finished my blanket and I yeah work on this on Sundays and I'm really loving it. You can see oops I'm showing you the wrong side. <laughs> there is the so you can see the little um detail oh can you it's like a little twisted stitch here and yeah it's one skein of green and then the scraps so i'm just using random scraps from my bin this is how much i did last sunday so i just kind of do that for my own uh curiosity did that so i'm about a third of the way to you have to keep knitting until you get to 170 stitches so I'm a third of the way there, so it'll be like to here. And the joy and the beauty of this pattern, which I'm really loving, besides that it's easy to memorize, is the fringe. So I've never really made something with fringe. And these are just the ends. You just cut the ends every time and that becomes your 
fringe, no weaving in ends. I mean, come on, who likes to weave in ends? Not me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I haven't, I think I'll stick with this size fringe. I don't want too long. This I'll cut later, but yeah. And I'm really loving these combos and I'm realizing that a lot of my scraps match green. <laughs> so I'm thinking I'll make, when this is done, I need another scrappy project for Sunday and, uh, and to use up all my scraps. So I don't know, I'm thinking of making the, oh, now I forget. Wool and pine, they have that sweater. Um, they use all the scraps and I have two other skeins of green like this that could go together. So I might make that t-shirt next. We'll see. I should have looked that up before. <laughs> I forget the name of that. It's the one where you knit every, um, you knit, you change colors every other stitch. All right, so yeah, that's all I have. A short episode. <laughs> I just wanted to, uh, yeah, make a little video before I get cracking on report cards because that's what I'm going to be doing all day. Ugh. <laughs> um, and yeah, I don't know. I can't think. I my brain is fried. Honestly, two days of PD was just a lot. It was overwhelming. Teachers, we never stop learning. Oh my word! And I tell you what, it helped me identify with my students because, you know, like they get frustrated, and then they of course don't have the um, coping skills that we have so they you know act out and get frustrated and <laughs> I'm like well I identify because I tell you what I wanted to act out <laughs> the last two days oh a lot of information and and the learning environment too it's making me reevaluate my classroom because when we were doing group activities um and there was a lot of noise and a lot going on at once I wanted to explode I like I went to my classroom and got noise canceling headphones. So we have money in our budget for our classrooms, which is one of the really awesome things about the school. And I am going to buy more noise canceling headphones, I think, because that helps calm down. I'm also working on the environment in my classroom and making the kids, you know, they get their teacher, 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 teacher. So. I'm uh, cracking down on that and being like, okay, no, we don't need to yell. We just raise our hands and I will come find you and help you. But all that noise yesterday, it just was overwhelming for me and I'm an adult. So think what it would be like for a kid. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think I learned more <laughs> yesterday about how my students might feel <laughs> than I actually learned stuff that will be helpful <laughs> with teaching. Shh, don't tell, don't tell my admin that. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was good. It was a good exercise in that aspect because I'm definitely going to be reevaluating things and yeah, making sure my learning environment is calm and peaceful and yeah, conducive for learning and that my kids can get the help that they need and not get to that acting out stage or yeah I mean at one point I just left the room <laughs> I was done so <clears throat> yeah and I do that too for my students we have hall passes if they need a break because our classrooms are small and there's a lot of people in them and it's overwhelming I don't you know so I let my students go for a break and walk down the hall they're restricted to only one hall and they have a hall pass just says I need to have a break because even I need to have a break in that small classroom with like 23 bodies in it, plus all our staff. I do love my job and I am really grateful for my class and all the staff that I have working in my class. I know it's something that doesn't happen down south a lot, so I'm very thankful for that. But I need to utilize it most efficiently, so I'm working on that. 
And that's what that PD has helped me do. All right, well, that's not knitting related at all, but that's what I, <laughs> I have been thinking about for the last couple days. Um, yeah, and knitting. Oh, I brought my knitting to class. <laughs> I'm actually going to teach my kids how to knit. I ordered looms. We're going to start with looms um, and buy some yarn, cheap yarn, probably from Hobie, just acrylic, you know. And I got these like looms that are about this big and well, I'm going to teach them. They can make a hat. Um, we'll see who sticks with it. I also watched, uh, was it, um, um, one another podcast and they were talking about making spools and she taught you how to make a spool with uh, toilet paper rolls and uh, popsicle sticks. So I'm like, oh, my students would love that. I want to do that. Teach them how to knit because I knit. They know I knit <laughs> and um, they are always asking me to teach them how to knit. And I'm like, I can't do that to all you. That's 23 bodies. No. That's too much, but I could do the spool knitting and the loom knitting because, yeah. So all you have to do is, you know, flip yarn over. So it's pretty easy. No fancy stitches or anything. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to, I'm excited to try that. I'm collecting my toilet paper rolls <laughs> and make some spools. We do a girls club too, me and another teacher. So that would be fun for them too. They would like that. Um, yeah all right well thank you for watching today and um yes a kind of rambly <laughs> one started off pretty ch -ch. that's me though oh i am a rabbit trail person if you hadn't figured that out by now <laughs> okay so i hope you have a wonderful two weeks good weekend and I'll see you back, maybe with some pants. I don't know if I'll have them finished in two weeks. I'll try to do another podcast in two weeks. Last weekend, I was just not feeling well, so I, I missed it. <laughs> but yeah, and take care. All right, bye.